Yes. Vieira. Here. Carlson. Here. Dean Felder. Here. Citro. Miranda. Maniscalco. Here. And Goods. Here. We have a physical quorum. Thank you, Madam Deputy Clerk. General, I'm going to uh, do a little housekeeping right quick. We're going to jump back on number eight. We've already had plenty of discussion. We're going to uh, see if we can get a motion on that to move that item. And then we're going to go into staff reports. Our chief of staff called me and said several people that are on standby have uh, subpoenas for this afternoon. Uh, so I want to make sure we uh, get those folks to court and we don't cause any problems with the, with the clerk over there. So if we can take up item number eight. Wait, no, Mr. Shelby to get in. Martin. He's all right. Mr. Shepard, just for a footnote, I've already uh, instructed the uh, council members that are already here. Remember, so we're going to go uh, right into item number eight. Uh, we, I don't think we need any more discussion on that. Then we just get into a motion on that. And also, I advise them that the uh, chief of staff uh, call me and represent several staff personnel have subpoenas that they have to honor this afternoon. I don't want to belabor them, so I want to jump right into that and we'll get into the staff report, and then we'll go into the consent docket. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Dingfeld, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I'm going to take Mr. Miranda's advice, because uh, as he was, as, as we were finishing up that discussion on the modified version of item eight, he said, you know, he said, I, I think I might like the idea, but we need to workshop it. And, and uh, so, uh, with that, I'd like to, instead of voting on item 8, I'd like to continue it and, and workshop it um, uh, at, a, at a workshop Mr. Shelby might suggest. Do we have any other relevant workshops uh, about zonings or south of Gandy or anything like that? High water? Well, yes. Um, do and I believe the clerk has some items. I think there are things that are asked going to be asked to be put on the May. Madam Clerk, you have uh, Deputy Clerk, you have any uh, dates? Or? Um, you know we what? do have some chapter 27 items for May 27th. Um, do keep in mind you have quite a few workshop items for that day, and including the two that were continued for number 71 and 72. So you have, excuse me, one and one of them is pure on May 27th, then um, the two related to the Pure, then um, the Chapter 27, and the one on the refinancing of bonds. So How about June? What, what's on June? And, and Su Ling, I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For June, you have Housing and Legal Department um, to define a term and the difference between essential workers. You have the mobility staff to, um, to speak on installing crosswalks and legal department looking into new zoning ordinances to um, pretty much copy in Chicago. All so right. those are only three. Yeah. Also be conscious, counsel, on the days of your workshops, you have night meetings scheduled. So I don't know whether you want to go far and well into the afternoons on your workshops as you move forward. As a matter of fact, um, at your special discussion meeting, which was followed up by a vote of counsel, you um, I had specifically requested that workshops uh, don't really are scheduled from nine to noon, or if extended, no later than one p.m. So just the June. The June it. doesn't sound too busy. Um, so with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll move to continue item eight to uh, incorporate it into a, a June workshop um, consistent with Mr. Miranda's request, and and also to include. Um, my my earlier motion that failed. I have a motion for Mr. Dingfeld. I have a second. I have a motion for Mr. Dingfeld. Do I have a second? Nobody wants to talk about it anymore. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll t tell you what. In the spirit of Clarence Darrow, I'm not going to support it, but I will second it in in in, in that spirit, um, only for purposes of uh, of getting a vote. However, however, um, I I mean, we we just rejected. Um, a, uh, a continuance of number eight, um, and I know we were missing two council members. I mean, it, well, maybe we should hold off until they come back. I mean, again, I, I have no problem having a, a, a vote on it, but would you like we're withdraw, missing. Uh, would you like to withdraw, Mr. Dingfeld, until we have a full? Well, no, let's just if we could defer my defer my motion, Mr. Chairman. Um, New business and, until the other council members are here, and then uh, we can just let's just run through the rest of the stuff. And, 
All right, well, we'll defer number eight uh, until the full council arrives. Hopefully they'll arrive. I appreciate that. And we will move on into staff reports. Consent. Yeah, staff reports. Do you want you wanted to get staff taken care of first? Well, sure? the chief of staff called me, sir, and said again that the folks are waiting to go to some court issues, and I don't want to hold them up. Uh, so I don't think we have that many staff reports that are going to. So I, I would like to get them out. I know how it is to be uh, present time of court and how the system is over there. Uh, we can confirm with the clerk, but I believe, for instance, on page 20, items 69 through 73, I think, have all been taken care of. Is that right? Yes, the only items remaining is 74, 75, 77, and 78. So there's four items under staff report that will still need to be addressed. 74, 75, 77, and 78. Correct. Thank you. Seventy-four, Mr. Chairman, appears to be uh, Council Member Dingfelder's item. Uh, then there was a motion. Item number seventy-four. Item number seventy-four. Is uh, Mr. Massey uh, or Mr. Rojero available? Yep. Like it, yeah. So my my question is pretty simple, and I think we can get through seventy-four pretty quick, Mr. Chairman. Um, the the memorandum from Mr. Massey, you know, basically went as he does with everything, very thoroughly went through what's involved in impact fees, that uh, communities all across the state are, are doing impact fees. I think the legislature just uh, modified the impact fee statute slightly, but, but it still allows public safety impact fees. And I'm getting a nod from Mr. Massey. I'll just put that on the record. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and as far as Mr. Rojero, Mr. Rojero, I don't know, uh, Basically, I think you said uh, you're looking at all of these issues as related to the needs of fire and rescue and the needs of TPD, um, which of course we, 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 you always do regularly. So my only request is that instead of just deferring this and letting it drift off into the wind, you know, I'd, I'd like to see us bring it back, you know, perhaps in, in 90 days um, to, to continue the discussion. And unless Mr. Rojero or Mr. Massey have any objections to that, that would be my motion. I'll second that. Motion on floor by Mr. Dean for the second by Mr. Maniscalco. Uh, okay. Both, both gentlemen are okay with it? Okay. I, I, and I'm so sorry. I, I was reading something. John, or Councilman Dingfeld, what was your motion? I apologize. 90 day continuance on this item about impact fees for public safety. Okay. Yeah, we have a motion for Mr. Dingfeld, the second by Mr. Maniscalco. Can we have a date, date on the calendar, date, date. Clerk, please? August 5th. August 5th. It's under staff reports uh, in the afternoon. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chair, may you I? You recognize, sir. And thank you, sir. You know, in con consistent with that, I want to say, um, you know, we re requested the administration look at whether or not American Relief Act dollars could go in, in part to fund uh, fire stations that are such acute critical needs. Uh, if, if I had a dollar for every time I brought up Station 13 here, I'd probably, you know, uh, be a millionaire by now. But um, yesterday I was out at K-Bar Ranch, and that, that's another area that has some serious fire uh, safety deficits. Um, uh, channel side, obviously another critical area, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think this is part of a conversation in terms of how we're going to fund uh, uh, public safety, police, fire, et cetera, um, in our very much so growing city. But I, I hope that... Um, uh, that eventually we can get a finding on uh, those 81 or so million dollars that we're getting from the federal government that maybe they can help us reduce this uh, public safety deficit that we have. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll move on. 75, uh, Deputy Clerk? Yes, I don't know, 75. And <coughs> this matter, Mr. Vieira and Mr. Trump. Yes, sir. If I, if I may, Mr. <coughs> Chair, um, I was uh, looking over here at the report. So it seems to say that after the first year of engagement, city staff will explore opportunities to refine and expand the program. Um, so, you know, what, so what I was looking at doing in this is to take a look at throughout all of our city of Tampa to underserved areas to see if the city of Tampa can have some sort of a youth engagement employment program that helps put uh, uh, young people 
uh, on the on a path to you know better success in community stakeholding by uh, you know giving them work skills and uh, having them work in, in, in you know helping neighborhoods etc kind of and this is much bigger but you know kind of what I was looking at is something like uh, a much smaller version of maybe the WPA Works Progress Administration National Youth uh, Association of the 30s that put unemployed people back to work um, uh, rebuilding their communities and and we have a lot of communities here in the city of Tampa that need a lot of rebuilding East Tampa Sulphur Springs uh, parts of uh, North Tampa parts of West Tampa etc and um, and and many many other areas and I think that's something that that we should certainly look at um, so if I see here correctly from the report they're going to be uh, looking at that so you know I, I have no problem with a reasonable delay but I am gonna motion um, and, and if I may I'll just do it now maybe to come back with an update on this process in um, six months in October in six the first months. week in October so that we can check up on the on this because uh, again this isn't th this is something that I think we can all support including the administration I know 110 percent um, and uh, so that would be my motion just to keep that up you have a date for that uh, <laughs> Mr. Gallagher. October 7th all right motion on the floor by uh, Mr. Citro uh, Mr. Vieira and seconded by Mr. Citro all in favor aye any opposed? Motion carries. We want to item number 77. Mr. Maniscalco. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I spoke about this earlier. Councilman Miranda had made some comments as well. But um, I had looked at the code and uh, I saw that, you know, should you move section 27-283.11B, uh, and you put it into section 15-4.5, it would give more and better authority to uh, the police department or code enforcement to ticket or issue citations to people under, um, uh, that are you know on the right of ways and whatnot, commercial vehicles and whatnot that are throughout West Tampa, throughout the city, uh, throughout <coughs> Hyde Park, South Tampa. I mean, I could go on and on and on from the complaints that I've received over the last several years I received a memo here, um, as everybody has, and uh, I think um, I, see, I see Mr. B Day and others from the legal department. I think Mr. Perez is, is there too. Um, how we can move forward with this? So my question is, what do we have to do, or do I need to make a motion to set this for a first reading, or how 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 do we move this process forward, sir? Sure. Good good afternoon, Council. This is Patrick Perez, assistant city attorney. Um, so yes, sir, you are in receipt of our memo. Um, I also have Big BA on the line, and I believe Susan uh, Warnick from Code Enforcement is also on the line if you have questions for them. Basically, um, uh, council's motion was to investigate moving section 287, uh, or 27-283. Um, our recommendation is actually to cross-reference and keep it in chapter 27, but cross-reference in chapter 15, which would allow uh, parking enforcement specialists and TPD to issue parking citations for the violations while also still allowing code enforcement to continue to enforce the zoning codes. Um, so basically we have a recommendation in there for proposed language to amend section 15 4.5. So we just need um, uh, a recommendation from council if you'd like to go forward through that route. Very good. I would like to go ahead and make that motion for what you just explained regarding section 15-4.5 um, so we can, uh, you know, use the authority here legally so it's defensible and we're protected, but still we can address the concerns of the neighborhoods. Because again, I mean, we receive, I get calls that Sunday morning, you know, I mean, I try not to bother anybody on Sunday morning, but this part of the job, I got a call at, at 8 a.m. one Sunday. And rightfully so, you know, I mean, people have waited for years for some kind of enforcement. Um, there are many reckless and irresponsible individuals that park wherever they feel like without any consideration to the neighborhoods, uh, without any consideration to people on bikes or children. It's a, this is a major safety issue, and I don't want blood on my hands. I don't want uh, somebody getting killed or any other um, problems because people are just being irresponsible. So. Uh, m my motion then would be that we, uh, and do you need a specific time for this or would this just be 
An into, does it have to go to an ordinance or a first reading or anything? First reading. It would be, it would be a, an ordinance because it would be amending the ordinance. And uh, we would like to bring it back if we could um, for first reading on uh, city council meeting on June 3rd. Okay. All right. So the motion would be to bring this back, section 15-4.5 for first reading. You're going to have a, a, a draft ordinance or an ordinance prepared. For well, first uh, reading. For the meeting, the meeting June 3rd. Um, clerk, you got all that? All right, the legal Chairman, department already has the language in place, so yes. If sir. I can, just so it's clear, I believe that, that um, Mr. Perez said that he can have, the legal department can have it put on the agenda for first reading consideration on that day, so you won't have Perfect. to workshop it. Perfect, so we'll it. take the vote that day and we'll move it forward. I appreciate, I appreciate it very much, you know, so I can respond to my constituents because I'm, I'm in constant contact with them as many of the other council members are, so they know that we're moving forward with, with proper enforcement and they are being listened to. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Madam Scalco has a motion on the floor. I have a second. Second, second by Miranda, Mr. Carl. Miranda, Mr. Miranda, 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 Miranda. 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 All in favor? Appreciate it very much. All I opposed? Thank Anybody opposed? Oh, I think so. Well, he's, he's talking. He's no, talking. I just want to thank Councilman Miscalco for bringing it up and doing a very good job on it. And what it is also that they get the semis with the tractor and the trailer, and they'll leave it parked on Armenia Avenue. And there are, there are businesses that, 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 that take care of the, the drivers vehicles and tractor and trailer they can leave it in a parked area but they charge for it so what's happening they're leaving it out on the street and some kid runs out you're not going to see it he don't they're not going to see the car the car's not going to see them and then on the other side they'll take the tractor home park it on on their front yard change the oil i got pictures of all that and they they i understand that what they're, what's happening i understand why but on the other hand, environmentally and everything else, it's just a chaotic thing for the city of Tampa to go through. And I appreciate what Councilman Escalco is doing. Mr. Carlson. Yeah, I, thanks also for bringing this up. The other thing is that, remember a year and a half ago, we worked with um, Chief Bennett on, a, on a, um, a unit of code enforcement or expanding the unit of code enforcement to help with parking. And um, uh, I had some conversation with him last week about tweaking that a little bit also so that it could um, uh, be more effective as it's, as it's starting to roll out. But this is a major problem. Par um, illegal parking in neighborhoods is, a, is, a, is one of the biggest areas of complaints that I get. So appreciate any help uh, to rectify that. A motion on the floor, any more discussion? Motion Mr. Bar Mr. Maniscalco, say by Mr. Miranda. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 78. Good afternoon, City Council. Kelly Austin, Director of Human Resources and Talent Development is on the line. Good afternoon. So first, I would just like to quickly say uh, thank you to Chairman Maniscalco for his service as chair, and, and congratulations to you, uh, Chairman Goods, on your new appointment. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions or, or have any more discussion around item number 78, which is regarding uh, the city clerk's office. So I'll stand by for any questions or discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, I made that motion. Uh, and I, I just needed some clarification. I did read the memo, but again, I did make a phone call to you, and we kind of discussed it a little bit because it was to me it was a little vague uh, in reference to uh, a study review in numbers. Uh, and I, I didn't, I don't think a lot of the council members uh, chimed in on it as much. Uh, but I want to make sure it's clear on uh, what are we going to do because when I look at uh, the spreadsheet of other departments, cities that are about our size. Uh, this city is growing and it's going rapidly. Uh, and when I look at other places to comparable pay, uh, we're lagging behind. And again, we talked about the city as a whole. We talked about the pay scale for all employees. And again, when is the last time a study has been done for combo pay uh, match up to other cities? within the state, without the state, of the type of job uh, workforce that we have. So if you could talk a little bit about that so this, uh, this council can know where we're at with that and, and what have you found so far or we, we still haven't got 
uh, the cart moving with the horse yet. Sure. Well, thank you for that feedback. And, and if I could just zoom out a little bit to talk about the process, not specific to the city clerk's office, but the process in general, and that'll only take just a minute. Um, we have a process in place where our department heads are tasked with identifying any needs or changes in their particular area of responsibility. So some of the questions that they regularly, routinely ask themselves are, you know, has my work volume changed? Has the task become more complex? What kind of overtime am I running in my department? Um, we meet with mayor's uh, senior staff uh, at least quarterly, and she encourages us to, to look backwards and ask ourselves the questions, you know, what tasks aren't necessary and can something be done more efficiently? And, and, and so we all are tasked with doing that. If we have a need that we identify, then we need to bring that forward uh, during the budget process. And, and if it is not done during the budget process, which as we all know, many things happen during the course and scope of a year, if it's outside the budget process, then what we do is we work with our budget analyst and human resources. And some of the things that we do is we do additions of full-time equivalencies. We might combine some vacancies. We might create some new positions. We might reclass or regrade, whatever it takes to accomplish the immediate need to ensure that business is moving forward as effectively and efficiently as possible while being budget conscious. Um, last year, the city clerk's office contacted human resources with a couple of requests and after the analysis was done, we were able to convert one part-time position to a full-time position. And also we adjusted uh, one of the salaries and we suggested at that time perhaps securing a contractor due to a, um, an extended absence of one of the employees. As a result of this motion, um, the chief of staff and Mr. Rojero and myself met with the city clerk's office to better understand what were the needs and the requests that were not being met or that there was concerns over. And that conversation kind of went in two lanes, one lane being really focused on the facilities aspect, um, and then the other lane being focused, focused on um, just the, the, the volume of work and, and perhaps you know necessary evaluation of the department and the tasks and the duties. So, uh, the city clerk's office was uh, guided at that point to make budget requests because this is the time that we're doing that exercise. And then certainly um, my office is looking at some salary uh, comparators. Um, but I, I would like to say one thing, Chairman Goose, with all due respect, uh, there are some aspects of our compensation that perhaps we pay less than others. But when I look across, there are also many, many aspects where our compensation is at or greater than and I always try to just be mindful of our total compensation plan which is not just the salary not that that's not important so I'm not taking away from that but general employees have a zero contrib contribution general pension available to them after vesting zero contribution on medical coverage for themselves access to the wellness center at no charge zero cost prescriptions um, you know, the accrual of annual and sick leave. So we look at all that when we evaluate how we stand up in the marketplace. That doesn't mean we can't always do better or continue to take looks. As a result of our conversation with the city clerk's office, there are some items that we're looking at. And then again, um, Ms. Fox Knowles was, was um, you know, directed to putting her requests into the budget process because this is the time that we're doing that exercise and hopefully um, you know, based on that analysis, we're able to accommodate whatever needs are uh, necessary in order to keep, you know, ensuring that, you know, the tasks and duties are getting accomplished in a timely fashion. And so that would be our goal for everybody. And that was a long-winded answer, so I apologize. That's okay. I mean, you, you, you gave me some answers. I mean, when you talked about the facility part, you know, I, I wondered why is it that if we put all this work into the chambers, that we did not put the work into their office over there because they're right next to us. There's a door right here in this chamber that somebody can walk through. So to me, uh, how do we not add that all in at one shot to make sure everyone's safe? Uh, when I look around and I see that, I question that right away. I was like, well, as in my plain case, police mind, I'm like, well, you did this over here, but we still have access. 
Uh, so I don't know what happened there. I hope we can fix that during the budgetary process and make sure they're secure as well because people come up here and walk through here all the time and go right to their office. So I'm hoping that you know we can secure them as well because, again, they not only work for the administration. I, I want to make that clear. They also work for council for our charter. So they work for two houses. So uh, we have to be mindful over here. And as the chair here, I want to make sure that my house is protected and make sure the people that are in my house are protected and that they're also being compensated correctly when I look across the spectrum. So uh, hopefully we're going to look at those things in the new budget year. Uh, with, with Mr. Hero, I see he's on the, on the line there. Also, when I look at the salaries and I look at administrators, uh, Ms. Ms. No Ms. Fox knows, I look at her salary. Her salary is way below even some of the administrators here within the city. Uh, that's concerning to me, uh, her being a admit person, an administrator over the clerk's office, which is a big responsibility to the city. So I'm hoping that, I mean, she may be doing some reviews for her people, but I'm hoping and I'm asking to make sure that her review is in it as well uh, so this council can review for the upcoming budget because I think uh, she needs to be compensated as well and not just sit back and be, be nice and you know, want to go along uh, to, to help out the other employees, but also help herself because she, she, she works hard here for all of us. So I'm, 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 I'm hoping that that will happen. Uh, and again, facility-wise as well. And again, I'm, I'm glad we're looking into this process. I don't know if anybody yes, else has anything. Go ahead, Kelly. I just said absolutely, yes, sir. Ms. Dingfield, I saw your hand, sir. Yeah, I just wanted to, to chime in and reiterate um, what Mr. Chairman has, has spoken to. Um, it's very sad that uh, Sandy um, took ill, and 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 uh, she she did an amazing job for 30 years, and we all love her dearly. Um, but uh, you know, I, I don't know if she's ever going to be able to come back under those conditions. And <clears throat> instead, uh, Su Ling has has jumped in and probably doing her former jobs and some of Sandy's jobs and. I don't know the details of the clerk's office, but I'm sure that <clears throat> that there's some significant readjustment that needs to go on. Um, that's my understanding. Council tries very hard not to butt into the administration's place in terms of salaries and that sort of thing, but this is an area that's, that's near and dear to us because we do work so closely with the clerk's office. So uh, maybe during the budget process this summer, um, we'll see some significant changes. I think that's the direction Mr. Chairman is asking us to go. Well, thank you, Ms. Dingle, for that. And you know, again, uh, you know, not to just throw Celine out there, but you know, uh, she has a lot of uh, credentials behind her belt at this time. And we have to also look at that. She's a deputy clerk. She's just not a clerk. She's a deputy clerk. And so, you know, we need to look at that as well. And with her credentials, she's educated. She has a lot of different schooling she's been to now. Uh, across the state, and I think you know we have to look at that as well. So, uh, any other questions, gentlemen, before we move on? I thank both of you very, very much, and hopefully we can get some of these things moving forward for uh, the next fiscal budget. Yes, thank you for the opportunity this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It looks like we have a, a full board. If you want to do that, item eight. Council members, some of you were, were delayed just a little bit getting back from lunch, and I know we got out here late and we you guys are getting yourself together. Uh, Mr. Dingfelder had wanted to put a motion on the floor uh, for item eight. Uh, I'll let him go and uh, rehash uh, what he was trying to tell the council that you all you were here, uh, and he, if he would like to put another motion on the floor, we go at it from that time. Well, um, as Mr. Miranda was wrapping up, um, he, you know, he had stated that uh, that perhaps a workshop on these issues might be more appropriate, and then we could we could have a longer, detailed discussion with input from from everybody instead of rushing herky jerky into doing something today or two weeks from now. Um, so, with that, um, I my motion earlier was to uh, to continue item eight as well as including the idea that I threw out today, I'll call it amended item eight, and, um, and put that on a workshop in, in our June, June workshop, which is what, the fourth week in June, Marty, or third? The 
third, the 24th is what? June 24th. June 24th. And we looked at the, that workshop and it doesn't look too, too, too busy. So I just wanted a full board here to, to uh, address that and vote on it and see where it goes. A motion on the floor by uh, Mr. Deanfield. I have a second. Second by Mr. Carlson. Any discussion? Mr. Shelby, you're recognized. Well, thank you, sir. Just to uh, set it, uh, would it be appropriate, let's say, to have it 1130 a.m. if we're spacing things a half hour apart? Or is, or, or is there another time the council right. would want it? Accept that Otherwise, it would not show up on the agenda as having any time. Is that correct? I accept that as a friendly amendment. Mr. 1130, Shelby. thank you. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Any discussion? I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll just say something, if I may. Um, you, may. you know, I, I had seconded it under what I now call the Clarence Dero rule originally. Councilman <laughs> Carlson now uh, seconds it. I'll be respectfully voting no. I, I, again, I voted against a continuance of number eight originally, and I'll, and I'll do it uh, here again, but just my thoughts. Sister, I see your light on. You thank, yes, thank you very much. And I, I again, cannot support it. Uh, I, I've stated many times today I would like to hear from what uh, planning and what Mr. Uh, Randy Goers has to say. And then I think I can uh, I can make a judgment better after that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. See you later on, Mr. Maniscalco. You recognize? No, no, no. It's I'm good. good. All right. We have a motion on the floor by Mr. Dingfeller. We have a second, Mr. Carlson. This matter, I'd like to take a roll call. Carlson. Yes. Citro. No. Miranda. Yes. Vieira. No. Goods. Yes. Dingfelder. Yes. Maniscalco. No. Motion carried with Vieira, Maniscalco, and Citro voting no. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. So we continued number eight, correct? Yes, sir, for a workshop. Miss, Miss, Mr. Chair, Miss Feely is looking very confused. Miss Feely, you, you want to say something, ma'am? Okay, she's off the okay. screen. Uh, sorry about that. No, I just you look you look angered there. You know we want to make sure now. The motion. I, I heard the motion, and I was I I thought I heard four nays and three yays. So I was a bit confused. Madam Clerk, would you like to uh, motion passed? Re re the motion vision? carried with Vieira, Maniscalco, and Citro voting no. Did you understand the motion, Miss Feely? Yes. Thank you. All right. All right, gentlemen, I guess we'll get to our con consent items. Bicentro, public safety, items at 9 through 16, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I move items number 9 through 16. Second. Bicentro has moved. Mr. Maniscalco, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Maniscalco, can you do uh, the Parks and Recreation items 17 through 23, sir? Yes, Mr. sir. Mr. Chairman. Uh, item 18, We're excluding item number 18. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Um, on item 18, I'm going to ask that we reinstate it and strike my earlier motion. Um, I spoke with staff during lunch. They clarified the issue that I needed clarifying, and so there was no point in continuing that for two weeks. So um, if, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Maniscalco, uh, if you could include item 18 and we'll strike, we'll strike the May 20th. Uh, from the uh, calendar. We just do, I guess, by unanimous consent, then a motion to rescind the previous motion on item 18. So moved. Second. I have a motion <coughs> to rescind by Ms. Dingfeld, a second by Ms. Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Maniscalco, again, would you go through item 17 yes. through uh, 23, sir? I move item 17 through 23. Second. Ms. Maniscalco, second Mr. Vieira. All in favor? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to yes, ask. Yes, sir. While we're still under the state of emergency per council's rules, especially on these contracts and uh, uh, significant items, I'd ask for roll call votes on the consent docket, please. Right. You want to go backwards? Can we go to, back uh, to public safety? Go back. Sorry, I still I will move it. items 9 through uh, 16. Second. Sorry about that, council. Right. That's okay. Vieira? Yes. Dingfelder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. All right, 
Thank you very much. I move item 17 through 23. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Ms. Dean Felder, can you go with Public Works items 24 through 30, sir? Yes, sir. I'll move items 24 through 30. Okay. Have a second by uh, Mr. Maniscal uh, Mr. Uh, Miranda. All, uh, all in favor of the roll call? Uh, ro Maniscalco? Ro yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dingfelder? Yes. Goods? Yes. The motion carry unanimously. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Um, Rob Rosner was going to try to be on standby to just read a few comments about 31 and 32. Okay, that's sir. That's possible. No. Thanks, Rob. Mr. Rosner, he's on the screen. I, I just asked him to read, to, to read this out so that the public watching, uh, you know, I in particular have a lot of constituents who are concerned about the way economic development has been done in the past, and I asked Rob and Michelle lots of questions, and they answered my questions, and I just wanted for the record to let them directly answer the questions that the public is going to ask us later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Carlson, appreciate it. Uh, congratulations to everybody in their new positions and uh, appreciate the, the time to speak. Um, just to open up, a, the QTI program has expired with the state and they have not uh, uh, reinstated a new program, but the, these two items, uh, 31 and 32, are items that were approved in the late 2018 timeframe. And what QTI is a state-sponsored incentive program that's created to uh, incentivize businesses to either move to the state or expand their businesses through increasing their numbers of full-time employees. Applications go through the state and are vetted by the state of Florida and the local participating jurisdictions, the city and the county in this case. There is an agreement between the state and the company and the state verifies all jobs that are created and are, that were agreed on by the company. Um, incentives are only paid after the jobs are created and verified per the agreement. The state reviews all employment records for every year of the agreement to ensure that the jobs created are maintained during the duration of the agreement. Annual incentive uh, received will never exceed the taxes paid by the company during each incentive year. However, the jobs created must pay a minimum of 115% of the Hillsborough County average at the time of the agreement is executed. Uh, the two QTI requests before the council today are a request from the city to participate in the QTI incentive program should the Smiths interconnect move into the city uh, from their county location. So their total incentive from the state would be uh, 659500 uh, The state pays 80% of that, which uh, uh, represents $527,600. <clears> the county will pay 11.5%, which is approximately $75,000. They paid a little more than, than uh, that because some of that's already been paid out. And then the city will pay 8.5%, which shows about uh, $56,212.50, uh, which is the rest of our portion. Uh, during the remaining years of the agreement if the company moves to the city. So uh, normally what we do is we pass both resolutions at the time and because uh, we don't know if they're going to land in the city or county because they're doing a selection process. This one, they're actually outgrew their space and are moving into a new space. But I just wanted to clarify those things for items 31 and 32. Thank you for your time. If I could real fast, there have been a couple high profile uh, failures in the economic development the world in Tampa in the last few years uh, where, where government um, subsidized companies that had spectacular failures. And the, I think the key point here is that it's QTI, uh, which is the old program still regulated by the, by the state, and the state is going to vet it in addition to all the vetting the city's done and any other group. So uh, the fact that the state is involved and there are several groups watching it, we can't guarantee that every uh, investment will do well. And in general, I'm against investments, but the QTI is an investment in our uh, community, not in a company. Thank you. Anyone else any questions? Anyone else? Mr. Randa, could you move items 31 through 9, Finance Committee? Chairman, I'll move uh, 31 through 39 with the exception of 38. Somebody else can move that. Second. Second, Mr. Citro, roll call vote. Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Goods? 
Yes. Motion carry unanimously. And Mr. Chair, as uh, uh, co-chair, I will move to item 38. Second. Thank you, sir. Motion moved by Mr. Uh, Citro, second by uh, Mr. Uh, Maniscalco. Roll call. Citro? Yes. Miranda? No. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Was that a yes or no? Yes. Yes, okay. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried with Miranda voting no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We've got one more item, right? Transportation? Ms. Vieira? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, and I got a I move 49 through 52. Should I do 40? Oh, 40. I'm sorry, Mr. Carlson. I'm sorry about that. Ms. Carlson, uh, Building Zoning Preservation Committee? Yes, uh, I'd like to move 40 through 48. Second. Second by Mr. Vieira. Roll call vote. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. 49 to 52. I hereby move. Second. Right. Second to uh, Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Goose? Yes. Motion carry Nancy. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move. I'm sorry, the board said both Mr. Shelby? No, just the microphones, if I can. Oh, uh, I'd like to move 53 and 54 that they both be set for uh, the hearing on July 15th at 10:30. They're both the same time and date. So yeah, second. second by Mr. Citro. We're in a roll call on it, Mr. Uh, Shelby. You know. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Carlson. You're recognized. Um, Number uh, number 55 and 57, I need to recuse myself. 55, um, 57. And I'd like to just um, make a motion to receive and file the, um, uh, what am I supposed to read? The, the company, the, the company whom I, whom with I am retained is a tenant of the property with uh, which the <coughs> subject of, the, of this ordinance. If you look at the pictures of the slides they'll present, you'll actually see my office. As to which number, sir? That's 55. number 55. And, and then number 57, um, I have become aware that a company by whom I am retained has a client which may have a financial interest in this matter with which my company is not involved. In this uh, quasi-judicial matter, I am abstaining to assure a fair proceeding free from potential bias or prejudice and to avoid the appearance of conflict. So I would like to um, ask you all to receive and file my form for number 55. So moved. We have a motion by uh, Mr. Carlson, second by Mr. Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then so to, I'd like to move to receive and file my form for 57. Two. So moved. Yeah, second by Mr. Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. And so Mr. moved. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I can, yes, considering sir. you had previously opened all the public hearings, I'd like counsel to take this opportunity to receive and file all of the uh, written comments that have been submitted to counsel and um, to be made part of the record that have been uploaded and have been available to the public Move to receive for their and inspection. All documents. Thank you. Second. Ms. Maniscalco has moved. Ms. Uh, Vieira has second. All uh, in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Hold your care. Also, counsel, if I can, when we get to the ex parte communications, when we get to quasi judicial, I just have to make your an microphone is yeah, we don't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, just when we get to the quasi judicial, I'm just going to ask uh, um, an issue with regard to ex parte communications, but I'll uh, I'll do that when we get there. Thank you. These two are non quasi judicial, 55 and 56. All right, we'll uh, move to open the uh, the hearings. We're oh, already yeah. open. All right, I'm on 55. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Council. I'm Ron Vila. I'm with Historic Preservation. I'd like to share my screen to do a photo presentation for you. Is my screen on your monitors? Not yet.
while they load that, I'd like to set the table. This is for 1302 East 7th Avenue. This is for a historic preservation tax application. Is it loaded yet? No, sir. Ron, you have you to share my screen, please. Yeah, you have to accept it when I send it to you, so I'm going to do it again. Okay. Ron, Ron, while you're waiting, I just have to point out that you look like you're in the visitation chamber <laughs> at Orient Road Jail. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think it's a visitation I'll, chamber. I'll, I'll, I'll second that. that. I'll second that. That's what it looks like. There we go. I thought Vera was going to make a comment, to be honest with you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, so moving forward, I don't want to take all your time. I know it's been a, a long morning for you. So to go through the program, this is the background and benefits of the uh, ad valorem tax exemption. It helps to stimulate the historic districts and uh, multiple properties. It eases the burden for maintaining some of these properties with these tax incentives that it has. Uh, eligible properties are local landmarks, historic uh, properties, and uh, buildings within the local historic district. And within the districts, either the Barrio Latino Commission or the Architectural Review Commission will review these projects. Wanted to share with you a picture. This is looking down 7th Avenue to the east from 13th Street. The building in question is over here. You see how it has recessed uh, openings. You see the sidewalk and the canopy that comes uh, more horizontally, horizontal from the uh, from the facade, and then the articulation up top. This is showing a, a photo of the front facade from the 30s. You see uh, it's pedestrian friendly on the bottom, and then the parapet on, on top. This is the Sanborn map from 1929, showing the area in question. It's this portion of the building. You see the. Uh, the concentration of the brick buildings along 7th Avenue, the brick is indicated uh, with the red or the pink uh, illustration. This is the building prior to renovation. The building had uh, stucco applied to, to the bricks and then the canopy came out uh, more at an angle that is not historically correct. And then there were some windows that were covered up. And then how it looks today, the windows were reorientated to let in the natural light and then you see the storefront and the canopy to be, be more period appropriate. This is looking at the uh, front uh, prior to rehabilitation. You see the stucco and the, and the storefronts uh, had been altered with the barrel tile on top. And then currently how it looks today, looking at the whole facade, looking from the eastern portion all the way back down to 13th Street. Uh, as part of this project, they wanted to re-engage the alley and, and have the alley more of a pedestrian experience as well. So the rear of the building was all enclosed and you see the condition of the alley. After rehabilitation, the bricks were laid in the alley and then there's storefronts along here that have um, businesses within. Moving to the interior, uh, everything was gutted. The drop ceilings were in place. And then this facade is the one that the windows were closed, closed up with the stucco. And then here you see that the drop ceilings were removed. You see the, the volume was recreated and the windows to let in the natural light to have a more pleasurable working experience. Once again, prior to rehabilitation and then after rehabilitation, when the drop ceilings were removed, the period skylights to also to let in that, that natural light to create that uh, beneficial work experience. This is the vertical accessibility and then how it looks today. And then upstairs through the adaptive reuse, there's some residential components. This is prior to rehabilitation. And then after rehabilitation, the floors uh, were repaired and, and brought back to their luster, the exterior walls. And then just a couple more shots of how the interior looks today. So the Barrio Latino Commission uh, reviewed this on January 26, 2021, and felt that it met the Secretary of Interior standards. So I'm here to answer any questions on this first ad valorem. Any questions, gentlemen? No, sir. That's a great old photo, home of the, home of the bananas. 
That's great. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful building. Uh, motion to close. So moved. Look, most closed by Mr. Maniscalco. Second by Mr. Citro. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? No, sir. Motion carries. Wait, we gotta we gotta read the ordinance. Yep. Ms. Mescalco. Thank you very I'm much. Sorry. I have an ordinance being presented much, for second reading and adoption. An ordinance approving an historic preservation property tax exemption application relative to the restoration, renovation, or rehabilitation of certain property owned by Ebor Morty LLC, located at thirteen oh two East Seventh Avenue, Tampa, Florida, in the Ebor City historic district based upon certain findings providing for notice to the property appraiser of Hillsborough County providing for severability providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict providing an effective date Second. thank you sir second by mr. Uh, Cito roll call vote Dean Felder yes. Maniscalco yes Carlson Citro yes Miranda yes Vieira yes and Goose yes motion carried Unanimously with Carlson be abstaining. I don't know if it's six. So I have the, the next ad valorem that I'm going to present to you. Is this on your screen? 3108 North Jefferson Street? Yes. Thank you. This is also in for a historic preservation tax exemption. Same qualifications for the ad valorem. It, it is a uh, stimulus for the historic properties. It eases the burden of the maintenance. Uh, the eligible uh, properties are designated local landmarks, historic properties, and properties within the historic district. And this was reviewed by the Architecture Review Commission. This is the map showing uh, in 1929, this building was referred to as the Graham Bottling Building. You see the, the nature of it, it's uh, red, is the color of the uh, Sanborn map, which indicates that it was brick construction. And then you see the density in the immediate vicinity in the yellow, which is frame construction with the housing stock. The uh, images are self-explanatory. This was before renovation and then after re renovation, the building was neglected for many years. And then you see uh, as uh, this program was used to exercise some dollars and the benefit the long term that it has and the viability it has into the district. Uh, part of this building was hit by lightning. You see the difference of the bricks here. This was all in the street at one time. It was, you know, uh, reconstructed and then how it looks today on the bottom. Portion of the building was dismantled, which was here. And as part of the, the demolition of part of the building, they recreated a parking area. So um, this building meets all parking requirements. As part of the demolition to that portion, the brick was sensitively removed, stayed, and then reinstated into the building where there was need for the brick to be uh, reinstated. Moving to the interior, you see the heavy structural members. Uh, they're part of the character defining features in the building. And after how they were implemented into the overall construction and became a, a visible component of the adapter reuse to the living uh, spaces that are there today. Part of the skeleton was the scope of the owners, how they wanted to leave it. So the before, you see how someone was peeling away. They worked on the building, peeled away that what was loose, and then left behind uh, what was engaged into the building to show some of the, you know, the 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 framework of the building. Interior, it has some wood siding on the upper levels. The wood was polished and retained. And then lastly, this is at 3108 North Jefferson on February 3rd, 2021, that the Architecture Review Commission reviewed this project and voted to recommend the City Council that this met the tax. I'm here to answer any questions. Any questions? Mr. Dingfeld, you recognize. Thank you. Mr. Vito, um, just uh, as a side note, it says the J.H. Graham Bottling Works, but then on some of those slides it spoke to bootlegger. Is there any interesting history there that it uh, became a bootlegger place at some point? 
The bootleggers is the name of the establishment today. The owners wanted to uh, attach that to it, so it has a little bit of mystique to it. Okay, so so we don't have any historical reference to that, just just uh, just a nice nickname. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and Ron. We hope you get out soon. Any other questions? <laughs> there was no bootlegging in Tampa. I don't know what you're talking about. The motion closed. So move. Well, Mr. Citro. Second. Second by Mr. Carlson. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Mr. Carlson, could you read number 56, please, sir? Yes, I'd like to move. 56. Um, 56. Yeah. I'd like to move file number E2021-CH27, uh, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance approving a historic preservation property tax exemption application relative to the restoration, renovation, or rehabilitation of certain property owned by Site BF Flats LLC located at 3108 North Jefferson Street, Tampa, Florida, in the Tampa Heights Historic District based upon certain findings providing for notice to the property appraiser of Hillsborough County, providing for severability, providing for repeal of all ordinances and conflict, providing an effective date. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Carls and second by uh, Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. I don't know, 57. Good afternoon, Chair Ryan Manassi, Development Coordination. Um, I need to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Yep. So item number 57 is file number REZ 20-92. It's before you for second reading and adoption. It's for the property located at 5430 and 5440 West Tyson Avenue. Uh, the request was to rezone from IH, industrial heavy, to PD, plan development for residential multifamily, single family attached, restaurant, retail sales, and shop, retail sales, shoppers, goods. Um, staff is available for any questions you may have. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, sir. Looking at, looking at the applicant. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, we can. Can you swear in? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Weaver Miller. Um, I have just a couple of quick like slides that. to share. If I could we share need, this. We need to swear you in. Oh, yes, sir. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is nothing, the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, before we begin, let me just um, uh, state, ask very quickly with regard to any. Can you turn your mic on, Mr. Shelby? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll learn how to use this better. Um, with regard to uh, any verbal ex parte communications, if any council member uh, has had any verbal communications relative to this case, uh, please disclose at this time uh, the sum and substance of that communication and with whom that communication occurred. I see no response. Thank you. You may proceed, Ms. Bessel. Thank you. And if you could share the screen that is labeled Suzanne Walker, that's our alternative computer, I would appreciate it. Got it? No. Mr. Crew or Su Ling, if you could um, enable the screen sharing for Suzanne Walker so we can get started. Yes, I gave her presenter right. Okay, great. Uh, we need to be able to share the screen. You've given it to me, but not to Suzanne. You should see a box pop up. You just have to accept it. Yeah, no, it's popping up for me, but not for Ms. Walker. I got the box, but. Yeah, on my end, it states Suzanne Walker, and that's the presenter rights I'm giving it to. Okay, you want to try that again?
the box down here and then Excuse me, this is Beverly, the court reporter. If you guys can hear me on my screen, it is showing that I am the presenter. At least give me a moment. It looks like Suzanne is logged in twice, so let me pull the other one over. Okay, great. Thank you. Is there a lot of public comment all the way through? Sorry about this. Hopefully, we'll all be together in person soon and we won't have to do this anymore. Oh, is this Suzanne Walker? Uh, you know what? That is not our Suzanne Walker. There must be a <laughs> member of the community named Suzanne Walker also. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, we're set. Uh, are you ready for us, Mr. Chairman? I'm ready. You may proceed. Yes, sir. Elise oh. Batzel, Stern Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am not in the habit of introducing any new evidence into the record at second reading but I feel compelled to address two significant legal issues related to Mr. Dingfelder's line of questioning about the chlorine issues that occurred during the 8th, April 8th hearing and to document them for the record should council decide tonight not, or that today, not to approve this project. Specifically, I want to address his line of questioning to Ms. Ira regarding the 1998 leak at chemical formulators, the 2005 leak at chemical formulators, and the Graniteville rail car crash. It is very legally important to note for the record that prior to his questioning of Ms. Ira, the record was completely devoid of any evidence of these three matters. The introduction of this evidence by Mr. Dingfelder presents two distinct legal problems that I'm compelled to put information on the record really to preserve the rights in case we need to appeal. The first scenario involves Councilman Dingfelder stating that he Googled chlorine safety and chemical formulators between the first and second hearing. Florida law is abundantly clear that members of a local council or commission cannot act on their own information. As early as 1962, the court in Thorn v. Florida Real Estate Commission spoke directly to this point. And they say in part, councils who are required to make a determination on or after a hearing in the exercise of a quasi-judicial function cannot act on their own information. It is improper for such an officer to base its decision or findings upon facts gathered from its own records without introducing the records into evidence. This concept was recently reaffirmed by the Florida courts in 2020. My legal concern is this, there is no way at this juncture for me or any of us involved today to know what information Mr. Dingfelder reviewed in his Google searches. Nothing was entered into the record. We can never know all the web pages or sites that Mr. Dingfelder reviewed in his independent research. We can never know what information he learned in his research and how that might inform his thinking on this issue and even his thinking sub unconsciously. Unfortunately, at this point in time, it's impossible to cure this prejudice to the applicant. But there's a second scenario which presents another legal problem. And I'm compelled to put additional facts into the record. As you may or may not know, the issue of prejudicial ex parte communication has been well established by Florida courts since 1991. The third district court of appeal held in the seminal case of Jennings v. Dade County that ex parte communications are inherently improper and are an anathema to quasi judicial proceedings. Quasi-judicial officers should avoid all such contacts where they are identifiable. And further, these ex parte communications are presumed prejudicial, and it's counsel's burden to prove that such communications were not prejudicial by substantial competent evidence. I'm merely submitting facts, and the first fact is that an email was sent to counsel by a citizen at 5.54 p.m. on the evening of the April 8th hearing. We obtained this information through a public records request. This information was not, and still today, is not in the public record until we showed it on the screen today. Her email contained four links. The first contained a link about this rezoning petition. 
And second, the, the other three links were related to articles about chemical formulators and chlorine gas leaks. Those three links covered these topics and provided specific statistics related to those incidences. They were as follows. The 1998 link at chemical formulators, the 2005 leak at chemical formulators, and the Graniteville Railroad rail car crash. I will remind you that during the last hearing, there were three things that Mr. Dingfelder questioned Ms. Ira about in detail, which were not in the record. Those were as follows. Number one, the 1998 leak for chemical formulators. Number two, the 2005 leak at chemical formulators. And finally, the Graniteville rail car crash. It is assumed that council will not open or read emails related to quasi-judicial matters that are coming before council for a vote. Or at a minimum, council will disclose such ex parte communication so that the communications are properly entered into the record and the applicant has an opportunity to evaluate and respond before any vote is taken. At the beginning of the April 8th hearing, and again today at this hearing, Mr. Shelby asked if anyone had any ex parte communication to disclose, and no one disclosed they had any ex parte communication. So whether this information used to create the line of questioning from Ms. Ira was the result of Councilman Dingfelder's independent research or whether it was prompting through undisclosed ex parte communication, it doesn't really matter because the end result is the same. The use of this information was prejudicial to the applicant and creates significant legal problems for this applicant if the project is not approved today. We hope that these additional facts that we've put into the record never become a problem for the city and that the vote goes just like it did the last time. As you know, every single issue that we presented that council presented or that members of the community presented, we addressed specifically with expert testimony and with competent substantial evidence. You do great work on this council, every single one of you. And I know that each and every one of you are public servants and only want what is in the best interest of the community. And that's why it's critically important to protect the process and the integrity of the decisions that you make. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Benassi? Uh, Chair, staff is uh, ready to answer any questions should council have any, but um, I guess it's back to you, sir. We have any other public comment? Uh... We have four. All right. Gentlemen, we have four for public comment. Hello? Oh, yes. shoot. Hold on. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, sorry. We can't see you, though. I didn't expect though. that right then. Woo, hi. <laughs> okay, You're sorry welcome. about that. <laughs> you know, but earlier my microphone didn't work, so I had a backup computer ready just in case. We, we have to I'm see you so we can swear you in. Uh, Miss oh, uh, Miss Wells? Thank you. I, right. I'm sorry to interrupt public comment, but um, for the record, Kate Wells, Chief Assistant City Attorney, um, I don't know if at this point, given the issues raised by Ms. Batzel, if Mr. Shelby would like to, to address them for the record and whether it would be appropriate for Councilman Dinkfelder to recuse himself. Ms. Shelby? If I can, uh, I would like, while we take public comment, I'm going to inquire of the clerk and then I will be able to address that if you don't mind. Is that okay with you, Ms. Wells, unless there's something you want to say um, uh, now that we should discuss? Uh, rather than take public comment. I was about to converse with the clerk. However you want to handle it, Mr. Shelby, I was just raising it for the record. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We'll get back to that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, sir. Thank you. I'll be right back, okay. Mr. Chair. We still have four. Hey, Sean. <clears throat> you know, swear him all at one time? Yes. Uh, no, okay. Okay, I have three out of the four. Stephanie Porner is not logged on at the time. So, everyone else, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. 
All right, we'll go with Miss uh, Jean Stonemeyer first. Sure. Okay, hi, my name is Jean Stromeyer, president of Interbay South of Gandhi Civic Association. I'm here to oppose uh, item 57 due to the chemical plant being 500 feet away from the proposed apartments. Development of channel side did not get converted to residential until their nitrate and soda chemical company left. Other hazardous industries in the Port Tampa, in the port area, are at this point are 12 to 1400 feet away. Chemical formulators is close to 500 feet from the proposed site. Harbor Island city planners testified that it did not get developed as residential until after they cleaned up where they used to use, it was used by the county as a mosquito control area. Danger of trains. There's only one train a day to CFI. If that train just travels 20 miles an hour, that means residences close to the tracks are within 880 feet of that train for one minute a day. If it goes 10 miles an hour, it's two minutes a day. Add the minutes, add the housing units, add the potential deaths. In 2015, there was a terrorist attack on a chemical plant in France. The terrorist drove a van into a chemical warehouse and it exploded. Security experts say that situation exposed the vulnerabilities of chemical plants to terrorist attacks. The United States Department of Homeland Security considers chemical formulators with its chlorine gas product industry to be a target of terrorist attacks. CFI informed Tampa City Council in 2018 of this vulnerability. They are required to file information with the Department of Homeland Security and the Coast Guard due to the, to the ongoing concern about attack either from the water or from the land. The lawyer for CFI testified to City of Council stating, I quote, chlorine gas is something that is considered a terrorist target. It is an extremely hazardous substance. We just want to make sure that everyone understands the risk posed by residential development near the plant. It was a bad idea during City Council then, and it is a bad idea now. Until Rattlesnake Micro Peninsula has been alleviated of heavy industry, chemical plants and such, now is not the time to increase population density at such a rapid rate, especially in the coastal high hazard. To do this is a blatant disregard for human life over profit. Please deny this dangerous rezoning request and vote your conscience and put life before profit in our great city. Thank you all for your time and have a great day. Thank you, uh, Ms. Carol Ann Bennett. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Carol Ann Bennett. And Americans' chances of dying in the 9-11 terrorist attacks were 0 .000001. My brother-in-law went to work that day in an office. He did not report to his firehouse. He was a captain in the FDNY, but he was also a chemical engineer. On September 11, 2001, he was developing a training class for hazmat. So he was at a nice safe desk and a nice safe office. But then the towers were hit. Six weeks later, after all hope was gone, a memorial service was held. It was a memorial instead of a funeral because nothing was found. <clears throat> a couple of years ago, the first of his four children got married. At her wedding, his daughter danced the traditional father-daughter dance with her uncle. In 2009, the chances of a teenager dying in a house fire were about 0. 0.000002. My nephew was safe on the sidewalk. My nephew was safe on the sidewalk, but he thought his friend was still in the house. Every day in that moment between dreams and reality, every day in that first second of awareness, every day his parents' first thought is, my son is dead. And that will be their first waking thought every day for the rest of their lives. Do I think there will be a leak at chemical formulators? No, I do not. Do I think there will be a terrorist attack on chemical formulators? No, I do not. Do I think it's worth the risk? No, I do not. 
There is a reason people buy lottery tickets and bet on long shots at the track and go to Vegas. Because no matter if it's 100 to 1 or a million to 1, the 1 always comes in. Sooner or later, the 1 always comes in. The difference between 0. 0.00001 and 0 cannot be calculated with math because the difference is not a number. The difference is a bottomless ocean of grief and pain. When the one comes, and it will, when that one comes in, if it's in Florida, if it's in Tampa, don't tell the public how shocked you are and that you didn't know the risk. Tell the public you decided it was worth the risk. Thank you. Sean Brown. Good afternoon, Councilman. Uh, it's been a, been a long day. And, uh, you know, obviously speaking on this issue, it's, um, it's something where we look at for competent, competent substantial evidence to support something of this nature. Unfortunately, that evidence would be lives lost. Incidents that have occurred in the past and people who have died and who have suffered and who have um, had permanent damage. That's the kind of evidence that we would have to present in order to um, really, I guess, probably convince all of you not to approve this. I don't think any of you want to ever be a part of history where that kind of evidence is stained and a part of your record. And that is truthfully where it's at. Now look, on Rattlesnake Point, there is chemical formulators, there's other industrial, there, you know, there is an there is an issue. As I said, it's only 500, 600 feet away from the plant. Uh, whether we whether you want to take the risk or not in allowing this type of development to start to occur, with that being on that peninsula. Bear in mind, Rattlesnake Point is a peninsula that juts out from our peninsula in South Tampa, as being South Tampa. Um, it's up to you whether you want to take that risk and maybe be a part of, a, I would say, a negative part of history if something were to occur now granted it's a big if as caroline said do we think it's going to happen no but there are there are the outs there are the risks we never thought 9 11 was going to happen we never thought other things were going to occur a few years ago russian president or whatever his title is vladimir putin puts out his video showing um areas he would attack in the country you know south tampa is one of them because of the base but nevertheless you know, tax, you know, countries like that are looking at areas to attack. And he puts out that video. You guys can find that online. So it's one of those things. Um, this is a tough this is a tough decision. At least it certainly presented a lot of evidence uh, for the proposal. And quite frankly, if that project was somewhere else, um, it, it'd be a much different discussion um, because, you know, they've put in mixed use. They've uh, done everything council and I guess in a way is asked for early on coming back with a more mixed use project but the fact is the location has a lot of risk to it and you know again to present competent substantial evidence would be to basically say something has already happened people have lost lives people are injured and that's that that's the kind of evidence that really all looking for and that's a problem so at any rate, you know, hopefully you'll take this to heart, vote your conscience, and decide for the best of the people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I see we have um, one on screen, number two on screen, correct? Yes. Stephanie, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Sorry. Um, I just need to say that um, bottom line is I had a long conversation with the leadership at the Corps of Eng at the um, reserve unit next door to um, the chemical formulators. Yes, I sent the email. Guess what? I had surgery that day. So it may have came after the hearing started, but I didn't, I didn't time anybody's opening them. And those articles are 
well open to the public. It took me about three seconds of Googling them. Um, I did call the, is it the Graniteville Chief of Police, or Chief of the Fire Department. He confirmed that um, that um, textile mill was approximately 300 yards from where the uh, spill took place. So it, it actually confirms that um, the, these apartments are gonna be well within the danger range. Um, and not only that, but the folks who told, talked to me at the reserve center said that there's a sock outside the front of CF in order to designate which way the wind is blowing so that they know whether it's safe to um, leave their recruiting center, their um, reserve center or not. Um, if not, they have a alternative plan to actually vacate the lot next door to CF um, via water vehicles from the Marine base just down the road. Um, so, you know, this, this is um, the Corps of Engineers has a detection system that is sitting on the boundaries. I haven't heard anybody from the developer talk about what kind of safety and security <clears throat> issues that they're going to have for this. Um, so, um, sorry, I sent an email during a meeting and I don't know um, what, when that became illegal because I thought we could send emails whenever we wanted. But anyway, thank you very much. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Go back to the applicant for rebuttal, correct, uh, Mr. Shelby? If I can, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to have to address some issues that were raised. Yes, sir. By Ms. Batzel, and I'd like to do that before her rebuttal. Uh, Ms. Batzel, hi, Martin Shelby, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, let me, as a matter of fact, as a way to do this, if I can. Okay, you can see me there too, and you can see me here. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. May I make a, a couple of inquiries relative to your presentation for the record? Of course. Thank you. Uh, the first the first one being with regard to the letter that you displayed uh, to council. Um, has that been, um, other than the screenshot of it, has that been provided to the, um, uh, to the city as of yet? No, it has not. Okay. Um, and was it your representation, just so I'm clear, was it your representation that that ex parte communication, that written ex parte communication, Communication uh, is Mr. still. Mr. Shelby, let me interrupt you for a second. Uh, yes. As a point of order. Yes. Um, I'll, 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 take every, I'll, I'll take everybody out of this agony. Um, this thing passed before, and obviously, council is going to ignore um, the, this dangerous condition of public health, health safety, and welfare. And it's going to pass again. So, regardless, I'm going to go ahead and recuse myself uh, because obviously that's what the development community and the city attorney would like me to do. So I will do that. I will recuse myself and I will walk out of the room at this moment. Thank you. And Mr. Mr. Dingfelder, you would then um, file within the 15 days the Form 8B, and I'll have that for you for the record yes, down sir. the road. Thank, yes, sir. thank you, sir. Mr. Chair, I, I, I take offense at, at Councilman Dingfelder saying that we are ignoring any dangers that might come from the building of this. I think that not only myself, but I will not speak for other council members, always take in all considerations of anything that come before us. I take offense that I was that it was said that I ignored everything. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do we know, Mr. Vera? Vera, you recognize? Um, I I agree. I disagree with the councilman's comments, but I will say this: he's probably uh, very emotional, uh, um, and and what, regardless of what one thinks about it, he's under uh, uh, a level of emotion now. So I I may disagree with that statement, but I don't take offenses when we get emotional. We say things. So I'm I'm. Not fine with it, but I understand it. J just my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Vera, for that. Mr. Thank Chairman. you. Ms. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if I can continue just very briefly. Yes, sir, we continue. Um, with regard to that email, um, to your knowledge, has that been since uploaded and made available to the public through the SIRE and through the um, uh, Tampa.gov slash uh, agenda website? Ms. Batzel, are you aware? Uh, as of the deadline and cutoff, it has not been uploaded and none of that information has been put into the public record. The deadline being what, past what, 24, 48 hours? Yes. Okay, thank you. And, um, pardon? 
I believe we checked this morning after okay. 9 o'clock. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, again, just a reminder for you and for the other participants, if there's any screen sharing, um, uh, please, pursuant to the rules, enter that into the record physically, uh, electronically, uh, through the, um, the process that's set forth in the, in the instructions. Okay, that being the case, if I can then just inquire of the board, just so that the record is clear. Council Member Dingfelder has recused himself, and now that being the case, and now you being aware of this presentation and the issues before you, are there any members of this board who cannot be fair and impartial and base your evidence upon the competent substantial evidence that have been entered into this record? If you have, please indicate that you cannot be fair and impartial. I see no one. Ms. Batzel, is there any additional things that you wish to have for the record? Uh, we do have one, I would like to make one comment for rebuttal based on the citizen testimony, please. Oh, but outside of the record, with regard to, uh, with regard to your, um, uh, your procedural sure. issues. That, that um, you know, my duty was to protect the record for my client, and my duty was to put the factual information on the record, and that's what we tried to do as, as carefully and diplomatically as we could. Understood, and I thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I turn the meeting back to you, sir. Ms. Bass, you may proceed, rebuttal. Yes, sir. Um, I have one question of our expert, Ma Martha Ira. I don't believe she's been sworn. She is not. Madam Deputy Clerk. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? You're muted. Yes, I swear. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ira, did you hear all of the prior testimony by citizens at this particular hearing? Yes, I did. I heard the four citizens' testimony. And was there any information that you heard that we have not already addressed at the prior hearings with expert testimony and competent substantial evidence, in your uh, opinion? No. Most of what they discussed, such as the weighing the risks and um, the you know the weighing the risks against the benefits and the the other um, information we had already addressed. I, I only heard one new thing. Someone mentioned a windsock. Um, that's that's um, typical. Any facility that has airborne chemicals typically has a windsock. It's part of the emergency response and um, it's part of the safety systems. Um, other than that, we talked about everything else at the previous. Um, meetings. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, unless you have questions for our team, our whole development team is uh, on the line if anyone has any questions. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time. Council, any questions? Any questions? Move, move close. Mr. Maniscalco, uh, Second. Second Member Citro. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Citro, can you read item number 57, sir? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Final number REZ 20-92. An ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance rezoning the property in the general vicinity of 5430 and 5440 West Tyson Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly scribed in section one from zoning district classification IH heavy industrial to PD planned development, residential, multifamily, single family, attached restaurant, retail, shopper's good, providing for an effective date. Second. I'll say Mr. Vieira. Roll call vote, please. Miranda. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. And Goods. Yes. Look, I'm sorry, start. Citro. Yes. And Goods. No. A motion carried with Goods voting no and Dingfelder and Carlson abstaining. Admiral 58. Thank you, Chair. Ryan Manassi, Development Coordination. Item number 58 is file number REZ 2109. It's before you for second reading and adoption. It's for the property located at 210 North Hubert Avenue, and the request before you was uh, to rezone from RS50 and RM24 to PD for planned development, residential, single family attached. Revised site plans have been turned into the city clerk, and staff is available for any questions. Any questions? We have the applicant. No applicant? Sir. Anybody on second, second floor? Anybody on the second floor? 
Ms. McLean, have you sworn in? I think not. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I've been sworn, sworn but I'll do it again if you like. We have someone on the second floor sworn in, uh, Deputy Clark? I didn't know. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Um, we have provided the revised site plans in accordance with the city staff request and the council motion. Uh, we respectfully request your approval. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions? We have no registered speakers or uh, okay. We're close. So moved. This is our Madam Scalco, we'll close. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Where's the second? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, any second? Second. Say Mr. Cifro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Vera, can you read item 58, sir? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair, I hereby move an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 210 North Hubert Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from Sony District Classification, RS50 residential single family, RM24 residential multifamily to PD plan development, residential single family attached, providing an effective date. Second. Second by Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dinkfelder? I'm sorry, what item are we on? 58. 58, uh, eight. 58 yes. Menescalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Chair. Ryan Manassi, Development Coordination. Item number 59 is file number REZ 2110. It's an ordinance before you for second reading and adoption for the property located at 602 West Warren Avenue and 601 West Euclid Avenue. The rezoning request was from RM16 to PD plan, develop, plan development for residential single family attached. Uh, revised site plans have been turned into the city clerk that are certified. As well as uh, just for your info, there is a bonus provision agreement um, that said res resolution be adopted after the second reading and adoption of this ordinance. Um, staff is available for any questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? The applicant? We did have Dwayne Melford registered to speak, but he is not logged on at its at this time. We have, we have a second floor. Any other registered callers? No registered speakers. Move close. So moved. Second. Yes, uh, we'll move close by Mr. Maniscalco, second by uh, Mr. Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Miranda, could you read item number uh, 59, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. File number REZ 21-10. Mr. Miranda. You voted no. Oh, um, you voted, you no. voted no. Well, uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I voted no. Oh. By correction, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dingfield, could you read item number 59, Dingfield. sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman, in regard to REZ 21-10, I'll read the following ordinance for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 602 West Warren Avenue and 601 West Euclid Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classifications RM16, Residential Multifamily to PD, Plan Development Residential Single Family Attached, provide an effective date, and I believe that... Uh, That's the all that's really necessary, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't know if you were going to add anything else, but just to remind council, there's an associated resolution to be um, uh, moved after this item. Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Vieira? Yes. Dingfelder? Yes. Maniscalco? Uh, yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? No. And Goods? Yes. Motion carried with Miranda voting no. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll move the I'll move the resolution associated with this item for bonus density. Signal, Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call. Miranda? No. Vieira? Yes. Goose? Yes. Dingfelder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Motion carried with Miranda voting no. Item number 60. Thank you, Chair. Item number 60 is REZ 2112. Uh, before you for second reading and adoption for the property located at 404 East Seward Street. Uh, the, re the rezoning request is RS50 to PD plan development for residential single family detached. Certified site plans have been turned into, into the city clerk and staff is available for any questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? You have the applicant? 
We did have the applicant register. However, they are not logged on at this time. Any and matters, we have no registers. No registered speakers. Anybody on the second floor? Move to close. Okay. Second by Mr. Uh, move to close by Mr. Mascalco. Second by Mr. Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Miranda, number 60, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, file number 60, file number REZ 2112. Order is being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning property in general vicinity of 404 East Seward Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly scribe in section one from zoning district classification RS50, residential single family to PD, plan development, residential single family detached, providing an effective date. Second, second by Mr. Maniscalco, roll call vote. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. And Good? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Item number 61. Thank you, Chair. Ryan Manassi, Development Coordination. Item number 61 is file number REZ 2114 before you for second reading and adoption. Uh, the property is located at 9904 North 14th Street, and the request was a Euclidean rezoning request from RS50 to RM18. Staff is available for any questions you have. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? We have the applicant. The applicant, Mr. Greg Hudak. There he is. Yeah, he needs to be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and council members uh, for your time and consideration review of this application. I just had one quick question. Is this for the REZ 21-15 item? I think I was item 62 on, on the agenda. You would be correct, sir. We're on 61. You're on 61. Okay, they they uh, asked me to jump in here. She's going to straight up. I think, Thank we're, you, sir. I think yes. we're 60. I think I'm 62 on your Yes, agenda. you're correct. You're number 62. Just so stand by. We do not have anyone register for item number 61. We have anyone on the second floor. That's moved close. Second. Move close by Mr. Mascalco. Second by Mr. Randall. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. We have Mr. Carlson. Read number 61, please, sir. Yes, sir. I'd like to move file number REZ 2114, ordinance being presented for second reading adoption, ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 9904 North 14th Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification RS50, residential single family to RM18, residential multifamily, providing effective date. Second, second one, Mr. Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Goose? Yes. M motion carry unanimously. Item number 62. Thank you, Chair. Ryan Manassi, Development Coordination. Item number 62 is file number REZ 2115 for the property located at 2710 and 2724 West Columbus Drive. Uh, the request before you was a Euclidean rezoning request, and it was from RS50, residential single family, to uh, and CI, commercial intensive, to CI, commercial intensive. Uh, staff is available for any questions you may have. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? All right. The applicant? Uh, yes, sir. I have nothing to add at this time. We're in uh, agreement with the staff's report and the recommendation to approve. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, anyone else to speak on this item, uh, Madam Clerk? No registered speakers. Move to close. Move to close. Second. Okay. Move to close by Mr. Citro. Second by Mr. Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Mr. Uh, Maniscalco, item 62, please, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I have an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption, an ordinance rezoning <laughs> property in the general vicinity of 2710 and 2724 West Columbus Drive in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification RS50, Residential Single Family, and CI Commercial Intensive to CI Commercial Intensive, providing an effective date. Second. Okay. Second one, Mr. Citro. Roll call vote, please. Carlson? Yes. Yes. 
Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Item number 63. Thank you, sir. Item number 63, uh, Ryan Manassi Development Coordination is file number REZ 2116 for the property located at 6800 North Nebraska Avenue. Uh, the request before you was a Euclidean rezoning request and it was from SHRS and SHCI to SHRM. Staff is available for any questions you have. Any questions? Any questions? Do we have the applicant? <clears throat> I do not have anyone registered for this item. Anyone on the second floor? Move to close. Move to close by Mr. Maniscalco. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Citro, item 63, please, sir. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. File number REZ 2116, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption an ordinance rezoning the property in the general vicinity of 6800 North Nebraska Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification SH. RS Seminole Heights residential single family detached to SHCI Seminole Heights commercial intensive to SHRM Seminole Heights residential multifamily providing for an effective date. Second. Got a second by Mr. Uh, Miranda. Roll call vote. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item 64, thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Item number 64, uh, Ryan Manassi Development Coordination, file number REZ 2117 for the property located at 902 East 25th Avenue. Uh, the request before you is from RS50 and CG Commercial General to PD Plan Development for Residential Single Family Detached. Um, certified site plans have been turned into the city clerk and staff is available for any questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? Do we have an applicant? I do not have an applicant registered for this item, near, nor any other registered speaker. Thank you. Move to close. So move. Second. Move by Mr. Uh, Maniscalco. Second by Mr. Randolph. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Vieira, item number 64, move please, sir. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I, I move an ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 902 East 25th Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in Section 1 from Zoning District Classification RS50 Residential Single Family and CG Commercial General to PD Plan Development Residential Single Family Detached, providing an effective date. Second. Second of the Citro. Roll call vote. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. Item number 65. Thank you, Chair. Item number 65, Brian Manassi Development Coordination, file number REZ 21-19. It's before you for second reading. Uh, the property located at 2717 West Hillsborough Avenue. Uh, the request before you was to rezone from CG Commercial General to PD Plan Development for Retail Sales, Convenience Goods, and Gasoline. Revised plans have been turned into the City Clerk and staff is available for questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? Do we have an applicant? Yes, Tyler Hudson is logged on. He just need to turn his video on. Should be on. Start about to be one second. Sorry about that. Uh, good afternoon, Council. Uh, I need to be sworn first, I guess. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. <clears throat> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Good, good afternoon, screen. Council. Tyler Hudson, 400 North Ashley Drive. Um, all, all changes have been made uh, since first reading. We appreciate your unanimous support at first reading and uh, request that again this afternoon. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Any questions? 
We have anybody registered to speak or anyone on the second floor? No registered speakers. Second. We're closed by uh, Mr. Maniscalco. Second, Mr. Citro. Roll call vote. I'm mean, correction. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Move the motion. We go to Mr. Uh, Vieira. I don't. I mean, correction. Mr. Miranda, item 65. To read, sir. Ms. Miranda, I'm, I, mean, I hate to stop you, but the clerk says she can't hear you. Could you get close to your mic, sir, please? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, number 65 again, file number REZ 21-19, ordinance being presented for second reading and adoption of an ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 2717 West Hillgrove Avenue in the city of Tampa, Florida, and more particularly described in section one from zoning district classification CG commercial general to PD, plan development, retail sales, convenient goods, and gasoline providing an effective date. Second. Second by Mr. Citro. Roll call vote. Vieira. Yes. Dingfelder. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Citro. Yes. Miranda. Yes. And Good. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Item number 66. Thank you, Chair. Ryan Manassi, Development Coordination. Item number 66 is file number REZ 2120. It's before you for second reading and adoption. It's for the property located at 15, uh, 1510, 1514, 1516, and 1520 West Bruce Street, 901 and 1301 Green Street, 1830 North Oregon Street, and then the following folios, 179822.00616, then 179822.0032, and 179822.0032. 0034. The request before you was for a plan development. It was from NMU-35, which is neighborhood mixed use, to PD plan development. And that was to allow all um, all uses allowed in section two, uh, I'm sorry, section 212, table 212.2, retail sales, shoppers, goods, drive up ATM, private schools, college, universities, uh, hotel with a maximum of 200 rooms, bank and um, bank with drive through ATM. Revised site plans have been turned to the city clerk and staff is available for any questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Any questions? The applicant? Council, this is Jake Kramer, Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street. Uh, thank you for your unanimous Can't support. Can I see you on the screen? They need to be sworn in. And we need to be sworn in, sir. Okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And if we could have him on the monitors, please, in the chambers. Could IT get the screens up there, not on the council monitor, Mr. Shelby's? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can you see me, Chairman? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Council. Again, Jake Kramer, Stearns Weaver Miller, 401 East Jackson Street. We appreciated your unanimous uh, approval. Uh, this helps us continue moving forward the West River project in, uh, in Tampa, which has already been started, and uh, we've would appreciate your support today. Happy to answer any questions. Our whole team is available. Thank you, sir. We have anybody registered to speak? I'm on the second floor. No registered speakers. Move to close. Second. Move to close, Mr. Maniscalco. Second, Mr. Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Dingfellow, can you read item 66, sir? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Um, Regard to REZ 21-20, I'll move the following ordinance for second reading and adoption. An ordinance rezoning property in the general vicinity of 1510, 1514, 1516, and 1520 West Spruce Street, 901 and 1301 Green Street, 1830 North Oregon Street, and folios 179822.0016, 179822.0032, and 179822.0034 in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section one from zoning district classifications NMU 35 neighborhood mixed use to PD plan development. All uses allowed in section 212, table 212.2, .2, retail sales, shoppers, goods, drive up ATM, private schools, college, university, hotel, maximum of 200 rooms, bank and bank with drive-in drive through ATM, provide an effective date. 
Sounds like quite a project. Second one, Mr. Brandon. Roll call vote. Commander Scalco? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Citro? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Dean Felder? Yes. And Goods? Yes. Motion carry nicely. Thank you. Item 67 was already heard earlier with the withdrawal. And item 68, may I uh, reschedule that to June 17th, 2021 at 10.30 a.m.? This motion by Mr. Manis Galco. Second. Second by Mr. Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Ooh, ooh, man. I'll tell you what a day. Yeah, let's go down the road. We go to new business. Mr. Carlson. No, sir, thank you. Mr. Uh, Maniscalco. I just want you to know that you did a wonderful job today and uh, best of luck moving forward. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Citro. <laughs> I, I second that wonderful meeting today. Nothing today from me, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Vieira. Uh-oh, man, I like uh -oh. the way that says. <laughs> I like the way you say that. No, I, I, a great meeting today, sir. Congratulations and to everybody. Um, I, I just had one motion, if I may. You know, last night I was out at K-Bar Ranch um, over in New Tampa, and there's so many, you know, different uh, issues out there at K-Bar Ranch involving public safety. Um, four out of the six fire stations in the city of Tampa with the longest response times are in New Tampa, and it seems that K-Bar Ranch really bears the brunt of that. So many different communities, city council approved uh, 700, I think it was, new homes out there maybe two and a half or so years ago. And um, a, a lot of different issues with Ken and Mansfield, fire safety issues. Uh, just, I guess it was two weeks ago, the mayor and I were doing a town hall out there and that night in K-Bar Ranch, there was a tragic accident where um, a, a mother with a 12 year old son, uh, uh, there was a crash and, and she drowned uh, and died out there. And, um, and just a, a lot of different issues. And I'd like to do a workshop, if I may, on uh, K-Bar Ranch, public safety and mobility issues. Uh, just to bring that to the forefront, I, I know that we're all booked in, in June. What would be the next workshop that's available? I was looking at the uh, calendar here. What's the next one that's available? The next available would be September 23rd. There you go. I, if I may, uh, Mr. Chair, September 23rd. Sorry. We have a second by uh, Mr. Uh, Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Anything else, sir? Uh, no, I, and I wanted to point out uh, also as well, if I may, that uh, wasn't it yesterday? The, the county commission uh, passed uh, uh, $7.5 million, the uh, uh, New Tampa Arts Center. And um, I always like to, you know, just give credit where credit's due, especially for people who aren't in office anymore. But uh, former county commissioner, Victor Christ, you know, he'd really worked on that for many, many years, and he's no longer in office. And uh, just wanted to give a shout out to him for his long work. And there have been a lot of people who have worked on that city staff, other commissioners, et cetera. But, you know, that was something when, when uh, I, I think he was probably a state senator, I'm thinking back then, he started working on um, arts and uh, community uh, venues for New and North Tampa with the idea being uh, first of the, uh, U, what would become the UACDC, uh, which is, you know, he, it's his baby. Maybe he's one of uh, numerous fathers and mothers of it, but it's certainly his baby, the UACDC. And, uh, and part of that vision was for New Tampa to have an arts center. And, uh, and that passed yesterday. So again, kudos to the county commission, and, uh, but especially for um, former commissioner and state senator Victor Chris, just as a professional courtesy, uh, I, I just wanted to salute him. So thank you. Anything else, sir? Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, Vieira, could we schedule that workshop for a 10 o'clock a.m. time, sir, and since we have a 9.30 a.m.? No problems Thank there. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Clerk. Mr. Miranda. I have a couple, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it very much. Uh, first one is uh, I've appointed uh, Andy, Mendes, Andy Scaglioni to the Budget Review Committee. As you know, That's a good my, choice. Uh, Dr. Absolutely. Nee had to leave uh, the state for a job change, and uh, he did a fantastic job. And, I'm appointing an individual that I know is well versed in finance. Uh, we have a motion for second. Mr. Uh, Miranda. Wait, you're, you're appointing Mr. Scaglione. Yeah. yeah. A second. Re review finance. Second by Mr. Uh, Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The next motion, one. Motion carries. 
Great Thank appointment. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is, uh, I'd like to make a motion to have the administration present the fiscal year 2021 mid-year review for the budget on May 20th, if possible. Second. Motion by Mr. Moran, a second by Mr. Citra. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And the last one, as uh, you know, when we were discussing item number eight, I kept talking about a workshop. I'd like to see this done. And I erred in my own judgment when I voted uh, for the continuation of channel uh, number eight. And I'd like to have that uh, reviewed again and take another vote. Motion to reconsider then, Mr. Miranda? Pardon me? A motion to reconsider? Yes, sir. When we were discussing, when we were discussing item number eight, I mentioned two or three times about a, a workshop, and I, uh, I erred, and I voted for a continuation of item number eight instead of workshopping item number eight. That's what I wanted to do. And, and that's what my motion was, the workshop item number eight. That's fine. So, so where are we at now? I, I thought that it was to, to continue item number eight. I wanted to workshop it. That's, okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, it's a workshop. Okay. Yeah specifically to workshop and, and to include the language that I offered today. Madam Clerk, is that correct? It was a workshop, correct? That is correct. That's fine. Anything else, sir? I thought I had made a mistake, and I made a mistake by making a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, sir? That's it, sir. Thank you very much. Well, what I want to say, uh, I, I think you might all have gotten a memo from me in reference to Mr. Miranda's motion in reference to the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, as you know, we talked last year in reference to making sure with these reappointments you have people on that board who are astute in finance and budgeting. So I hope when you make your reappointments, uh, whoever you have, uh, that, uh, again, Mr. Rennett got a good person on there, and that is needed. So, again, uh, make sure we pay attention to that. It's going to be, be key uh, because I did get a couple of calls from the past chairman, and uh, apparently uh, had, the phone calls hadn't been received or returned. And so I'm glad that Ms. Miranda and Ms. Mary is on that now. So thank you, sir, for that. And I think Councilman Miranda probably has the, the best oh, yeah. pick on the oh, board. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to talk about detail oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. focus, I'll tell you that. You go. I got him on the sports door. I, I know. Uh, Mr. Dingford, how about you, sir? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two items. Um, one, I'd like uh, counsel to uh, – an interesting legal question came up today. Um, and I'd like counsel to direct Mr. Shelby – to do some research and, and come back to us uh, with, you know, perhaps a not not necessarily a mem legal memorandum or anything that formal, but but just some information to give us future guidance, and that's specifically as related to this question of ex parte information. So the insinuation is 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 we 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 have to view these rezonings with a totally blank slate with nothing in our minds, and my concern is is we all bring to the table general knowledge historic knowledge. Mr. Miranda has an amazing historic knowledge that he reminds us about. You know, um, newspaper articles, sometimes even in the middle of a rezoning, a newspaper article might come out, um, either in the Business Journal or in the Times or what have you, about that rezoning. So it's like, well, you know, do we all disclose that we read that newspaper article? Or that we didn't read that newspaper article? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, but that issue came up today. And it kind of took me by surprise a little bit. Um, and then, I think we're all creatures of Google now. I mean, how many of us at one point in every single day of our lives, you know, might say, huh, that's a good question. Let me Google that up. And, uh, and, and, and therefore we do. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to direct that research any way or, at all. But I think that for future reference, for purposes of quasi-judicial, we need to have some, some guidance from Mr. Shelby um, on, on that issue. And, and uh, so I think it's a very harmless motion, and I would ask for a second. 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 I'm happy. A motion by uh, Mr. Uh, Dinfeld, second by Mr. Vera. Did you want to say something, Shelby? No, I'm happy to do that for City Council. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Motion carried. Anything else, sir? Thank you. And um, Mr. Chairman, uh, going back to 2016, and, and I, I waited until until you know we don't have any any rattlesnake point issues on our plate but going back to 2016 uh, count the council in 2016 was faced with the issue about a text amendment that was a, a privately initiated text amendment that changed the language of that chemical plant issue and, and significantly okay that 
change was opposed by the Planning Commission Board. Uh, Mr. 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 Chairman. Uh, wait, wait, you don't know Mr. where I'm Mr. going. Uh, Mr. Sh uh, Shelby? With all due respect, and, and perhaps it's not inappropriate, but I, I just want to share. I'm to workshop it. I'm, That's all. Well, the, the question. Future date. What I'm concerned about is we're in a 30 day appeal period. Right. I'm asking to we workshop it in August or September. Okay. Well, I, I would just be concerned about talking about specific okay. facts well, relative to that here. I won't get into specifics. All I'll say is, as a matter of record, because I was reading today's record, as a matter of record, the Planning Commission voted against that plan amendment, and, and our city staff, our very own LaShawn Dock, uh, wrote to David Hay and, and recommended that the city's position was against that amendment. So I would like to workshop that amendment uh, in, let's say, September, and, and see if, it, if we still feel that, that that amendment was appropriate, or maybe we need to revisit that amendment. Second. Motion on form, Mr. Uh, Dingfelder. Second by Mr. Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. And for specificity, that was Comp Plan Amendment 16-02. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Will that be a time specific for 1030? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I got today. Thank you, sir. Uh, pass the gavel to you, sir. Ms. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Bier. Go ahead, sir. No, no, I was saying, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know you were going. Miss Wells was going to say something. Ms. Well, I'm so, I'm Ms. Wells, I'm sorry. You have the and floor. And my apologies. I know it's been a long day, but I, you know, I thought I understood council's motion previously with regard to item number eight, but with the discussion council just had, um, it, it specifically Councilman Miranda, I'm confused as to what the action is because That's I understood the that the motion was for a continuance of the item in order to workshop it in June. Yes, it was a continuance of the item to workshop it to workshop it in June, but to not only workshop it, but to workshop the changes that I propose today and, and to include that in the workshop. Okay, because I understood Councilman Miranda saying I decided to workshop and not a continuance of that item. Whether Dingfeld would bring any shit up and sure oh enough. Oh my God. Oh my God. So whoa, we can hear whoever's whoa, saying, whoa. we can hear whoever, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, just. Point of order, you know, we, we heard that clear. <laughs> I don't know, I ain't said anything. I, unfortunately, I, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear anything. I, I heard enough. We heard it. But I, I heard not, something. Say this. I heard it. No, I'd like to, I'd like to. Point of order, point of order, point of order. Mr. Randall, you're recognized. As it comes down, I was asking Mr. Dinkfeld earlier, we get the verbiage from you guys up there sitting, but all this plastic, by the time it gets to us, it's half mumbled. Yeah, the audio is we don't hear it here. too well. I, oh, we heard it. All right. Mr. Well, chair. I don't know what happened. Mr. Here. Chair, I'd like to find out. I'd like the clerk or someone to find out if that was a staff member or someone outside because that was completely inappropriate. I, I didn't hear anything. I agree. What they said was if Mr. Dingfeller would just shut up. I didn't hear that either. We heard it clearly. And, and if it was a staff member. Many, many people. <laughs> no, but if it was a staff <laughs> member, that's, board, board, not, board, that's board. not acceptable. Mr. Car Mr. Carlson has the floor. It's not acceptable. I mean, we're the, 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 sure the staff report to the mayor, but, but, um, but city council has to work with staff and that was an inappropriate comment if a staff member made that. And Mr. Bennett's on there, Chief Bennett, and he, I know that's not reflective of how he or the mayor feel. Thank you. Uh, Chief. Good afternoon, council. John Bennett, Chief of Staff. Uh, first, um, unrelated to what we're talking about, congratulations and on everybody who's received a chair, a pro tem, or a vice chair role today. First time I've been on this afternoon, so I want to take that moment. And thanks to um, uh, previous chairman Maniscalco uh, for his service um, through the last year. Um, I, I also picked up on the comment, and uh, I will use work with TNI to figure out um, who's online, whether it was the private sector or the public side, and see what I can bring back. But uh, yeah, we don't tolerate any any kind of behavior that's not conducive to serving the community through our continued partnerships. So, hey John, I John, think, John, just as long as I can be assured it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not a, not a <laughs> All right. I have you know. So anyway, thank, thank you. you, thank you, John, thank you, Bill Carlson. Ms. Wells, we can continue. Uh, 
Well, I think the question really goes to Charlie. Charlie, okay. is, was, is, there, is there any confusion as to my motion? I, I don't know what, you know, all I know is we talked about number eight. We talked about, I was talking about workshopping the whole thing from the beginning because to go through the legal process, I don't think we did enough work to make a, a representation legally, uh, one way or the other. And I just wanted to clear it out, have a workshop, have the people come in, because the way I was reading it, it comes in today for first reading, and two weeks later, it's going to come for second reading. Sure. And I certainly didn't want that to happen without any uh, uh, input from both sides of the agenda, from left to right or right to left. And I, I thought I was workshopping the whole idea, so later on you can bring it back for first reading. That's what I thought. But, you know, and I, I voted the wrong way if it was any other way that didn't conclude. I don't want to see that in a workshop and then the, the, the that same day, a first reading. I don't. I don't think that's appropriate. I no, think you got to give that's, that's ample not, of that's time. That's not the to intent. Public. The intent is just a workshop. Yeah. So if you're that, okay that's the way that. I interpreted Mr. Miranda was just a workshop, and we would go from there. But I don't believe anything was a first reading at that workshop or any any type of intent that way. Uh, but uh, my my keen police antennas kind of went up because I mean I can I can tell the 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 the, 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 the smoke ain't really clean right now. With, with, with all, all of a sudden this is raised again. Uh, but again, you, you have the right to raise that. And again, uh, the way I interpret it, it was a workshop of all the spec, spec, uh, specs of the situation, and then we would move from there. But it was nothing of an ordinance coming back, my understanding. Is that correct, Mr. Dingfeld? Yes, sir. Mr. Shelby, was that your interpretation, sir? Well, well the, the question then is, Mr. Miranda, then you withdrawing your motion. Are you satisfied, sir? Satisfied that just for a workshop, that's what I said in the That's beginning. fine. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, we all, all minds, all hearts satisfied. Ms. Wells, anything else, ma'am? Thank you, that's it. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Deanfellow, can I pass the gavel to you, sir? I got it. Just a few. Uh, gentlemen, I would like to make a motion uh, for the Tampa Bay Juneteenth Coalition to receive a combination honoring our efforts in bringing cultural awareness to the community of our history. Second. This combination will be presented at the June 3rd Juneteenth celebration uh, in Tampa. We have a mo I'm sorry, we have a motion. Is, yeah. Then we yes, have sir. a second. second. Yes, All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carry on. All right. Uh, my second one, I'd like to make a motion for staff to appear and give details of the progress or direction for the finding and repair of the seawall on the, uh, uh, in the uh, Palmetto Beach on Bermuda uh, Island. Second. I would like for this uh, to be uh, take place at a June 3rd regular session council. All right, we have a motion by the chairman. Second. Second by Mr. Miranda. Any conversation, all in favor? May I please? I, I believe Mr. Meniscalco had, may I correct that? I believe Mr. Meniscalco had his hand before I said aye. All right, Mr. Meniscalco with the second. Mr. Citro, you have a comment? Yes, please. Um, there is, uh, and, and if I may, I, I want to really hear this uh, workshop and this report, but we're also looking at differences during sea level rise instead of repairing seawalls to making sure that mangroves <coughs> go in. So if we can also look at that also during this report. Thank you very much, Councilman Dinkfelder. Want to include that in your motion, Mr. That'd be, Chairman? That'd be fine, sir. Okay, we've included that as a friendly amendment of the motion. We've got a motion and a second by Mr. Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Also, uh, we've got a motion uh, for a uh, from Carol Post in reference to the plan staff, a legal order appear to provide a staff report recommendations for chapter 27, uh, asking for it be, to be workshop on May 27th. Is that correct, Mr. Shelby, the memo that was given? Yes, the, uh, that was provided, that memo was provided um, uh, to city council and uh, the clerk does have a copy of it. It's a motion we'll to add to the May 27th okay. workshop. Do you need a second um, on that? No do second that. Okay. Do we have a do we have a time certain, Madam Clerk, that you'd like that? If I can, Council, I'd like to address that. If you look at the May calendar, that was before Council had its uh, special discussion meeting and taking action on how you're going to, and it's still going to be a work in progress when we bring back the uh, the rules. But they're all set for nine o'clock, and if you look at the way they're grouped, several of them are grouped for the Pure Project, and I believe there's also a memo that's going to be following. Um, relating to adding to the PURE project. Then there are the Chapter 27 discussions. 
um, and that takes place somewhere as to the second from the last. So perhaps to add these, we can ask the clerk to group them with the administration to group them in a sort of an order. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. You'll have to do that the day of the workshop. Um, can so we do you that just, at the next. If meeting? you set it for nine o'clock, if you set it for nine o'clock, as all the others, we'll, we'll, if it's council's direction to group them by subject matter, we can reset them in certain order with the administration. It, can Mr. We, Chair, the day can of the we pure. Hold on a second, Bill. Um, can we reschedule? Can we reset those two weeks from now and still have time before the uh, before the actual workshop, Mr. Shelby? You mean reorder them? Yes. Yes, I suspect you do. Yeah, well, Madam Carlson, Clerk, I'm Madam Clerk, what do you think? That would not be an issue. Mr. Carlson, your comment? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody as as the if the pure project <coughs> continues to move forward, the crowds are going to get larger and larger in public comment so it could be long public comment that day it's that's that's just the next meeting but they're going to get larger and larger and, and even more reason to try and segregate the these these totally different issues from each other during that session mr chairman yes sir mr shelby i, I did receive the second memo from the chief of staff in reference to council chambers uh oh I, that's I, that, that's that's actually a third one sir if, if we could go back to the the, 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 the May the May twenty seventh workshop for the um, um, the administrative process for the five percent of dimensional criteria as it's stated in the motion, um, it's what the uh, I guess the administration is calling uh, administrative lot creation. I believe that was um, a council's um, uh, initiative to bring to the administration to ask for. Um, has that been added to, to the 27 workshop, or does that still need to be voted on? It still needs to be voted on. We no, have a first and a second, but... Okay, so there's a motion on the floor. Yes. Can we take a vote on to add that to the May 27th workshop? Because what can happen, Council, as a result of today, when you come back with the updated calendar, you'll see what's on May 27th, and quite frankly, just you have an alcoholic beverage meeting, uh, generally, and two decisions from the zoning administrator, two review hearings, it looks like. Um, so, uh, but they're all similarly related. Um, and there's another motion after you take this motion on the same uh, page um, from Abby Feely uh, requesting another issue related to Chapter 27 that they're also asking for May 27th. Marty, that one is already placed on the agenda for um, May 27th. It already is? is? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. So then okay, it's- Okay, so Mr. Uh, our Mr. Chairman has a proposal from staff uh, to add the additional chapter 27 items. We need to vote on that first. Yes, motion and second that's on the right. floor. We have a, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Citra is second. Any discussion on the motion further? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And now Madam All right. Clerk. And then, and then Mr. Shelby, informally, I guess at some point, two weeks from now, you'll come back and help us organize what's going to happen on the 27th? Yes, yeah, so perhaps the clerk can work with the administration and I'll, I'll certainly participate in that, um, to do that. Uh, does that, if I can inquire of the clerk with regard to um, uh, uh, Brad Baird's memorandum requesting for items, did you want to take that up next? Yes, that is the next motion and that one is actually requesting to be scheduled for June 24th workshop. Ah, that's the June 24th, okay. All right, who's our water person? I guess that's me, Mr. Chairman, so. Go you can take back the take gallon. it back. Okay. I'll motion to uh, motion to. Uh, I want to see if she can follow. Well, we got it. We just need a, a, a second on the motion. Second. Okay, Mr. Chairman. I'll, on behalf of the water department, um, it looks like. Uh, let's see. They're requesting that the. What does this mean exactly? Uh, the administration would request to the, that the public communication update, which includes the finding from the four community conversations and public survey, be provided at Council's June 24th, 2021 workshop. That would be my motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. And do we put a time on that, Mr. Shelby? Yes. Ms. Clerk? The next available time is 11.30, hold on, do we have another one? 11.30 a.m. No, 11 I take that back. Your... I take that back. Um, the motion you made earlier was set for 11.30 a.m. 
So, Marty, I don't know if we set it for noon. Are we taking a break at noon? We could schedule a time after a break. And this one is what, Ju June? June 24th. I don't know. I can, um, I don't know whether we set it at noon or we set it, you know, what you can do is set, set to for 11.30 and we can certainly, I'll work with the chair to be able to work out the timing issues. All right, for now, for now, June 24th at 11.30. Well, the time's out. It's probably going to go over anyway. We're probably going to be later anyway. So you just time certain really ain't going to really work half the time anyway. To be honest with, you. if we got that, if we got that many things on the calendar. It's not going to be that way. Let's, let's just be honest. Well, I'm happy to help you. <laughs> Mr. Shelby, again, I have the memo from the chief of staff in reference to the convention center. Yes, that dates so back. Heard, Oops. I think we just did. Did we? Just did we? Did we? I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. We have a motion on the floor, Mr. Dainfelder. Second, Mr. Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Ms. Shelby, reference to the memorandum, Chief of Staff, and reference to the Convention Center and uh, the uh, Health Department? Well, the, yes, that, uh, that was a memo that was sent uh, previously by the Chief of Staff. I don't know whether he's still on the line and wants to address it, but I did have the opportunity. We did talk about it, um, and I provided it to you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, council um, previously uh, um, I believe was distributed to council members. Uh, but um, now, Mr. Chairman, um, the Chief of Staff would like to be able to have the opportunity to uh, have a walkthrough with you um, uh, to discuss the options that are available and then perhaps bring it back to council so you could, your office perhaps can schedule that. I don't know if Mr. Bennett is on the line and wishes to add anything else. Is Chief still on the line? If not, we'll just go ahead and Mr. Shelby will get with Sonia and uh, Sonia can set up the walkthrough what, what we need to do. Oh. All right, there he is. All right, good afternoon again, Council. John Bennett, Chief of Staff. When, uh, when we did the transitional walkthroughs dating back from the Super Bowl period to um, kind of the, the recent time, if you will, uh, before the, the chairman has changed roles, um, we saw some opportunities in chambers to improve the experience and also progress with the de declining of the pandemic, but yet still keep everybody safe, socially distanced, uh, sanitized, et cetera. So I just thought it would be a good uh, benchmark with the change of the chairs to do another walkthrough, both for the chamber space and the office space, and make sure the facilities um, has all the visionary opportunity to support council and the public um, in these forums, as well as the other boards that go on. So if the chairman's amenable to that, I will work with uh, facilities team and we will arrange that in short order thank you sir that'll be fine mr chairman if i yes, could just follow sure. up for city council for purposes of next week's meeting um of course the uh the notices are going to have to be posted you have a cra meeting next week and yes. you have an evening meeting of rezonings and i had an opportunity uh, just very briefly to speak with um, uh, mr massey relative to the cra but it's my understanding um is that uh, with the exception of um, encouraging people uh, to use masks and social distancing. Uh, the meetings, until there's direction from council, will be continuing pretty much in the same format, but as we work with the chair and as the chair works with the administration, um, there will be changes, obviously, uh, as we move forward, and those will come back well, to council. With to the governor's new order, yeah, it's gonna be some changes, so, you know, we've gotta, you know, go with the times and make sure we still stay, uh, stay safe, of course, because you don't know who has been vaccinated and who hasn't. I think most of the members in council have been vaccinated, but we don't know who's coming in the house, so we got to still protect the house. So the second floor will still be utilized the same as, as, as this week and has in the past as we move forward next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll be receiving Bob. So more, Ms. Van Scalco, second member of the seat row, all in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion carried. We adjourn. <laughs> you break that gap. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So wait, wake us up. to tell you me down. But that's something I don't like. They wouldn't well they wouldn't be here for this five foot separation either. I mean that would resolve both of those issues if, mm -hmm. if they chose primary setback.
That's correct. Okay. 